Professor Batchener, your subject area is forecasting with a focus on financial markets. There seems to have been a significant failure to forecast the Brexit vote and now financial markets in the UK are in turmoil. What's going on? Right, well first of all on the forecasting, yes it's true that the opinion polls have let us down again. And from the point of view of a forecaster, I guess more surprisingly, the betting markets have let us down. Normally we think that betting markets give good forecasts because um, people are putting their money where their mouths are, if you like, and so it's a test of sincerity whether you place a bet. So there has been a bit of an inquest into why that happened. It seems as if um, about the same number of bets were placed on leave and remain. However, the typical remain bet was about five times as big as the typical leave bet, maybe reflecting the different demographics of the voters there. And there's a result. The bookmakers thought it was about four to one on that we stayed. Um, we'll know better next time, but you know who knows when the, when the next time will be. I think regardless of whether the polls, the bookmakers had done a good job, uh, there would still be this turmoil in financial markets because the whole vote has moved us from really from a world of measurable risk into a world of uncertainty. Yes, we hear the word uncertainty in every news bulletin these days. What's the difference between uncertainty and risk? Well, they're different in degree, because clearly we can't be sure what things will happen in the future, but normally we think of a situation of risk where uh, there are certain scenarios you can imagine happening and you can assign probabilities to them. Financial markets are quite good at pricing shares and currencies in line with uncertain forecasts of that kind, or risky forecasts of that kind. Um, similarly, futures and options markets, all these things that got us into trouble back in 2008, actually they exist to tell us what a good price for insurance against these risks are, and they do a good job in normal times. A situation of uncertainty, though, is one where we can't begin to think of what the scenarios are, far less assign probabilities to them. And that's really what has happened with the Brexit vote, because we're now in a situation where our future path is going to be determined by the actions of politicians in the UK, who seem to have very different views about, you know, attitudes to the EU, how to get there. Politicians in the rest of Europe, you know, who again have differing degrees of hostility towards the UK and whose opinions are, are, are evolving over time. And in a complex system like this, it is very, very hard to forecast. Now, people hate change, and uh, people hate what we call ambiguity, uncertainty. They are averse to ambiguity, and we're in a very ambiguous situation. We don't know whether we're in or out of Europe. Our politicians seem to be split in terms of what they think their political parties are for. Uh, we don't know whether we're going to pursue austerity or not. And so there, there's, um, yeah, you know, there, there's just a huge, huge um, uh, sort of problem of, you know, seeing through this fog. And we know what people do in this situation. People kind of freeze, they duck, they run for cover, they, you know, and you can see firms are just closing down their investment plans, they're rethinking their strategy, they're putting a freeze on hiring. And, uh, you know, this obviously in the short term is not good for the economy. And it's, uh, you know, it's the main problem that was foreseen, I think, by the forecasters who predicted that a pro-Brexit vote would lead to some economic slowdown. Is this uncertainty why sterling has taken such a battering? Um, not really. I mean, actually, the reaction in the currency market has been pretty clear and rational. In the run-up to the Brexit vote, there were two scenarios for sterling. Either it could remain high, 50%, or crash, as it has done, 50% uh, probability. Uh, and in a way, the vote resolved that. So we now know where we are, and you can see that the implied volatility, the kind of cost of insuring in that market, has actually fallen quite sharply. So the currency market, I think, has behaved in a predictable, well, up to, up to a point, predictable and rational way. What is more worrying is what is going on in the stock market. But the FTSE 100 seems, if anything, to be bouncing back after the initial shock. 
Well, the FTSE kind of measures an average, and this is an average of some UK-based companies, some UK-listed companies that have export markets and can expect to benefit from the devaluation. And they're quite, some quite big companies, and that's why the index is looking good. But on the other hand, if you look closer at the smaller companies and companies that serve the domestic markets, companies that will be hit by these freezes on investment and hiring, it's a very different picture. And perhaps not surprisingly, implied volatility, cost of insuring against bad outcomes, this has risen quite sharply in the stock market and is going to continue and I think is going to be a weight that is going to drag on the British economy uh, over the next few, few years and it will be a challenge for our policymakers to try to tweak policy to offset this um, kind of uncertainty inspired drag on growth. Roy, thank you very much.